I've got a few radios to consider here and they represent in some part the evolution that we've seen of radios over the last 20-30 years. <clears throat> we start over here on my left with a VHF radio and this is a 16 channel monoband VHF radio. Then beside it we have a small little 2 watt UHF unit. You see these typically used as FRS units in bubble pack radios. So then you needed to carry two radios of course if you wanted to cover UHF and VHF. Along came the dual band radio. They integrated a UHF and VF, VHF VFO into LSI on a circuit board. <laughs> the original dual band radios such as the first Alenco that I had actually had two circuit boards in the body and of course used twice as much power because you had to power both of them up. This one here, I just happen to have the TYTs here. This is the UV98 which is the low end of the dual band scale and over here we have the digital model which is the higher end of the dual band scale with the integrated GPS zones and so forth. This does digital, this one just does analog but it does it in both UHF and VHF. Now we come to the dilemma with using the dual band radios. You can see over here when we go back here I've got a VHF antenna dedicated to this radio. I've got a UHF smiley stubby duck dedicated to the UHF radio. On these two radios you see the stock antenna which purports to go from 136 megahertz to 174 in VHF and something like 400 to 460 or 470 in UHF although it may claim that as you can see here on the stamp on the bottom of the base what you're going to see in the upcoming vector network analysis is it comes nowhere close to covering that range and that's why when you do move into dual band you're facing the dilemma of what do I do and that leads you to a couple of scenarios. You either use a tri-band or dual band antenna that is adjustable such as this telescoping one from Smiley or you swap antennas out so that when you want to talk on VHF on this you'll put an antenna such as this on and when you want to talk on UHF to your tail gunner you'll then swap another antenna on. Those are the realistic options for using a dual band radio but they aren't necessarily all that popular and it often resorts to users falling back and using the stock antenna wondering why they're having so much trouble talking to people and why their radio doesn't seem to work very well anymore after a season or two because they've damaged the VFO in it so badly with huge standing waves. So now let's go and have a look at documenting this dynamic through a look at a chart from the vector network analyzer and you'll see what is meant by all this. What we're looking at here is the stock antenna which is the dual band antenna <coughs> which purports to cover the two meter band <coughs> in fact I think it says on the bottom it goes from something like 136 to 174 we'll look at that here shortly and then again it shows a range up here in the UHF <coughs> I think up to something like 475 and again we'll have another look at that. 
but what we're looking at here now is the actual standing wave ratio that you can expect from this antenna at all these frequencies. The green bands represent the area of interest for us. So here we're roughly going from 145 to 175 and I'm looking at my cursor here. And then again around 220 to say 260 somewhere in there and then this thin green band over here pretty much corresponds to the area around the FRS frequencies and <coughs> my markers show where we start to head above acceptable standing wave ratios in those ranges. So here marker number one. If we go and look up on the top left hand corner of the screen here and under the report for marker number one it shows that it's at 155 and it's at a standing wave ratio of 2.7 just before it heads out and beyond what we could accept. So what we see here is this antenna will work acceptably from around right here we're looking at somewhere around 140 <coughs> through to 155 above 155 there's no hope for that antenna. <coughs> I'm going to skip over the 220 range here and then we see here um, if I want to know exactly what this range is you watch over here for marker number three when I move this marker over to the left side sorry I ended up moving marker number one I have to select number three before I move it so I'm going to do that now and I'm going to move number three over to here and you can see that we enter the acceptable range around 426 megahertz and we start to fall out of it around 400 let's call it 445 so we're basically looking at an acceptable range in UHF of 426 to 445 that's how the stock antenna shapes up for sticking it on to your dual band radio and what you may expect. Now let's imagine that I'm going to go to work and my work frequency is around 163 or somewhere between uh, 160 165 for example and I really see here that I can't really use the stock antenna to be there so let's see what happens when I've put a center tune 160 antenna on here so I want you to watch here in this first green band where I've got my marker number one and let's see if I can move mar marker number one up to around 163 which now moves us up into here with the standing wave ratio of almost 15 <laughs> and let's now sweep to see with that new antenna what happens to marker number one and the standing wave ratio if we put a tuned antenna on. We wait for the sweep to complete and we see now that marker number one has come down to a standing wave ratio of 1.9 which is much more acceptable for a frequency of around 163, 164 megahertz and I think this illustrates why you would not be able to use the stock antenna and for convenience you can see here if you follow my cursor again here was the acceptable standing wave ratio everything below this red line that's 3.0 would be acceptable 
and you can see where when we moved over here we needed a tuned antenna to fit into that. As well then you would see that you would be required to select the appropriate tuned antenna throughout the range of say 145 to 175 in order to have an appropriate standing wave ratio that is acceptable for the frequency that you're on. So of course I need to respond to the most common assertion that I hear which is I don't want to be swapping antennas on my dual band radio and I want to talk to my base station on VHF and I want to talk to my client on FRS but there's no way I'm going to be changing antennas when it's minus 20 centigrade outside. Well the answer to that is not always what they want to hear because then you need to go to a proper tunable dual or tri-band antenna such as the Smiley 270A and that's what we're looking at right now and this is the 270A in the fully expanded state so all the sections are fully expanded out and this shows what you can expect from it when you have it in that state in three bands and again we're mainly interested in the VHF over here and over here the FRS frequencies and you can see here that in both those cases it is acceptable within those ranges pretty simple you just fully expand that telescoping antenna and now you're covered in all of them what about if you just want to keep it in your pocket or in your pack and you don't want to expand the sections you just want to leave that antenna fully collapsed well let's see what happens when you do that watch the markers here and here's the price you pay on VHF for leaving that guy fully collapsed your standing wave ratio in VHF is not bad when you're down here and let's move our marker there and see what that is that's at 145 but when we get up here to the edge of our range around 180 it's getting pretty high and it is acceptable though if you're over here again on your FRS frequencies or even when you're here say around 230 megahertz so the takeaway if you, you want to leave your 270A fully collapsed in order to talk to your tail gunner on UHF you're okay doing that but if you want to call the lodge or hit a repeater on VHF then and I'm doing this now while I talk I'm pulling all the sections on the 270A out again fully expanding it and once again let's watch marker number one over here and see what happens to it when we complete our sweep see where it bounces down to a standing wave of 3.2 so it's right about near our acceptable range I'm just gonna reorient the antenna a little bit and just do another sweep and see if we can improve that and it marginally improves things there but we're right on the line so if in doubt fully collapse at 270A and you're going to be within spec for all your bands if you want to use a rubber duck then use a VHF duck when you're in VHF and put a UHF duck on when you're on UHF but don't use the stock antenna.